And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Expedition Northwest Passage, where you are following in the expedition, the Franklin Expedition, trying to figure out what happened to them, going into uncharted territory and finding, well, the Northwest Passage. You're doing so, hoping to get there before the water freezes over. This is a strong thematic game, in a sense, from Matago, who has made some great games like Kemet and Cyclades. And so I was very excited to play this one, although this one has a very different feel than those. Let me show you how. Okay, here's the board of the game, and you'll notice this board is kind of an undiscovered map section, and your ships will start up here in the top where you see some tiles are on the board. And as the game progresses, more tiles are going to be added to the board as long as they match the different types of terrain that are out there. So perhaps this tile will be placed like this. As the different types of terrain are put on the board, the map is going to be growing. Now you'll notice this disc here. This disc is really critical for the game because this disc is going to move around showing the seasons. Everything underneath this disc is water. Everything above it is frozen. So as the game progresses, when the, this goes here, the entire board is going to be water and lakes. And as this moves around, you can see that when it's down here, half the board is frozen and the other half isn't. In fact, at, during two turns of the game, here and here, only the very bottom line is going to be unfrozen. Everything above that is going to be frozen. Each player has a ship which is going to be able to move around on the unfrozen tiles. And then if the tiles freeze up, each ship is able to launch a sled which can move around on land or even frozen tiles. Players are going to be using this board. Now this board has a lot of scoring information on it, but it also has a bunch of crewmen. You'll have seven crewmen on your ship. And each round of the game progresses like this. Uh, players are going to take their turns in turn order. Turn order is going to be over here. And on a player's turn, they can move down a certain number of crew and take the action that corresponds to whatever number of crew they move down. And you can see the actions down here and the number of crew. You're actually able to take extra action. Let's say, for example, I take an action which is draw a tile. And I want to draw another tile. I can do that before anyone else goes, but I have to pay an extra crewman to do the extra tile. You won't do this very often because it's a terrible waste of crewmen, but occasionally you'll want to do that. At some point during the game, you can launch your sled, in which case you'll move men from your ship to your sled, or your sled, you can, if your sled gets back to your ship, you can put those crewmen back on your ship. So you can then take actions with your ship and or your sled. So what are these actions? One of the actions you can do in your turn is you can take a tile. Now over here we have the square tiles and these tiles are all the same. They're stacked up at the beginning of the game and all the different combinations. This one's all ice, this one's all water, half ice, half water. And um, then over here though, these rectangle shapes are always gonna be different. They're randomly pulled from a bag and what's really cool about these is, is that they're mirror images on the reverse side. So if I want to put the tile in and it doesn't work this way, maybe it will work on the other way. So another action you can take is to take any tiles that you have gotten, because you'll have a collection in front of you, and you can place that tile on the board. So perhaps I have this tile in front of me and I can slide it in here. As long as I touch ice to ice and water to water, I'm fine. And so there's different ways to attach these together. Now as the game progresses, it is possible when you place a tile, like let's say I place this tile here, that you'll leave a square tile open. When that happens, it's instantly automatically filled. So we see this was water, 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 and ice. And so I'll take the triple water and ice tile and automatically place that. There's actually the back of the tile can be used if you run out of a specific kind. I haven't had that happen to me yet in the game though. Some of the tiles, when you bring them out, will have little pictures on them. For example, this one here shows a little abandoned boat, and you'll put a token on the tile for that shape. If you finish an island, you will get, when, while I'm putting out a tile, you completely finish an island. For example, this island here is finished. You'll get one of these tokens and put it on your sheet. Another action you can take is by moving your 
ships, they just go from tile to tile as they move around, and you can do that as long as you, you can get there water-wise. For example, this ship is here, and there's water that connects it to this tile, so it's legal for me to move there. And so you'll be moving your ship around. Sleds can move from tile to tile if it's iced up. If it's not iced up, they have to have land from one tile to the next. Another action can transfer crew, I've already mentioned that. And then another action can be to explore these sites. Now there's different sites, they're called different things. There's Franklin sites, there's Straits, there's uh, in, Intuits. And by the way, I showed you the wrong one. This is a, uh, a token that's, that's put on the board. This gray token is the one that players get when they discover a new island. But anyhow, so as you can spend some actions to take a token off a place where you have a ship or you have a tile and put that on your sheet. So the game is going to progress, and as after everyone's spent all their actions, you can pass, and sometimes you'll pass early because the first person to pass gets to go first in the next round, and you're going to be slowly building this map up. Now you'll notice this big times one times two times three, that's because when you take these little tokens, you're going to get points, and that point total will be multiplied by that multiplier down there. You're trying to get to the Northwest Passage. In fact, you're not allowed to build tiles so that it blocks it off. You have to get there somehow. And the first person to get there is going to get points. And these points change based on the number of players. This is for a four-player game, 15, 10, 6, and 3. And then you want to get back home. And you don't even have to get to the Northwest Passage to go back home. And here you get some points. In fact, if you don't get back home at all before time's up, the, uh, you're going to lose some, some points as the game progresses. So the game is going to essentially, it starts here, the token, and we'll move around the entire board once and then come back over here to where it says the end. At that point, players are going to total up their points. They're going to total up points for these bonuses that they've gotten for going to the Northwest Passage or making it back to Greenland. And then over here you can see that whoever has the most of these different tiles is going to get points. So whoever has the most of these blue tiles will get 11 points. Whoever has the most of the Discovering New Islands is going to get 9 points, etc, etc. So there's just different amounts of points that you will get and whoever has the most points is the winner. Northwest Passage is a very thinky game. I mean very thinky. There's a couple things in this game that may put off some people. And when I say some people, I'm including myself in that. I think this game is a beautiful production. It looks gorgeous. The tiles are all different. It has a really cool concept also of building the map. As you play the tiles out and seeing the map, that's a cool thing. I like that. Although I liked it from Carcassonne, but this is no Carcassonne type thing. See, when you put these tiles out, there is a ton of thinking that is going to go into that. The tiles don't fit on the board very easily. Uh, as the board gets fuller and fuller, it's going to be more difficult to put those tiles out. So when you put a tile out, you have to figure out how it fits into the land formation, the ice formation, but you also have to figure out when you're putting out the little relics and the bits of expedition, will you be able to get to those? Knowing when to launch the sled is critical. And this is the second thing that I'm not a fan of in this game, is that if you make a mistake in this game, you can lose and you can know that very shortly after you've made the mistake. If you miscalculate and your ship is stuck in the ice for a couple turns, that can be very dramatically bad, especially if you've already launched your sled and don't have all the people on it that you need to. I mean, granted, what you want to happen is for your ship to get stuck in the ice and then you just keep sending the people out on the sled and come back. And that's fine. See, here, I, I want to be very cautious. This is not a bad game. It's, it has a fairly strong theme with the ridiculousness of the points for having the most different tokens. That's just silliness. But, I mean, I don't mind that. That makes it a, a, a good game as you're getting these different things. But it's brutal. This is a brutal game. Now, it says on here 60 minutes, which I think is probably lying. It's probably closer to 90, but let's not quibble. But those, you're going to be sitting there the whole time thinking very carefully where you're going to put your tiles. It's very easy for someone else to place tiles and mess you over to make you have to go all the way around a, a, a place, perhaps because they cut off you going from one spot to their spot. That can really mess you over as time goes by. And getting all the little tokens and trying to figure out points and such, Here's, here's the thing I have about the game, and, and I guess this is another thing I'm not a big fan of, is that you're really kind of doing the same thing every game. You go down, you come back. I mean, a lot of games have the same feature, and the way that the islands are built are different, but I don't know. I, the game was just felt more like work than fun. 
and that's always kind of a turnoff for me in games. But at the same time, I can see the excellence of this game design. I, I, I think that it's a, it looks good. I think it's going to appeal to some people. And the idea of the ice freezing, that's a completely innovative mechanic. I think it's a great idea. And I, and I think it's neat, you know, to, when you're going to launch that sled. Everything else, though, is really very Euro-y. These, these same mechanisms that are there just to make the game work. I don't know. I, I know some people who like this game a lot. And they like these these type of games that are very, you know, mentally gymnastic -y and we're trying to get points for the different things. But for me, it just, it, it it's like a beautiful work of art that I think is ugly. In a sense where I can look at it and go, wow, that's a good artist, but I won't hang that in my house. That's how I feel about this. Well-designed game. But uh, if you asked me to play it, I would have to be grudging if I said yes. Like, all right. I understand this, I accept this, but it's just not my level. But I do applaud them for the innovative mechanic and the cool theme, Northwest Passage. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door, yo! Boop. Boop.